In this video, we're going to talk about composable graphs by Llama Index, which allows to build indexes on top of other indexes. We will create individual indexes for all these companies listed here. Then we will compose them and build a composable graph on top of this index, on top of all the indexes, so that when we query these indexes, we can query all of them at the same time, which would not be possible with traditional similarity search. Due to the limits of chunks you can feed into the large language model. Composable graph builds an overarching index on top of every individual index so that we can query each index separately but all at the same time as well. Let's run this and see what's happening. We do have a list of company names, technology company names, but the name these could have been anything. Here we also have cities and philosopher names, but we're going to be using technology companies. Let's just run this. I am running this with the Visual Studio debugger. I put a stop breakpoint right here so that we can see what's happening. As you see, we have downloaded all the Wikipedia articles related to these companies and we have saved them under the data folder, each and every one of them. Now we are going to load them and create indexes from them. First, we're going to try to load the indexes and we're not going to be able to because we haven't created them yet. And then we will create indexes for each one. As you see, what's happening here is we are using, we use 9,000 tokens for the first index. Embedding, these are embedding tokens. We can see these numbers here because we have defined logging and we are receiving the info for more detailed info. We could have used debug. So we have created the indexes and we have saved them to disk. We can see under storage, we have created each one of those vector indexes for each one and on top of it we also have created a composable graph from all those indexes and we have saved it under this root you can see it right here so now we can query all of the indexes and this produces in my experience better results than traditional querying with regular indexes for example let's ask what are the differences between intel amd samsung and apple regarding the chips they produce as we see, we start, we start the querying process. This do take quite a lot of tokens. You see, we already used 1,800 tokens, 19 tokens for the question. And we are still continuing the query. We use another 1,952. Because we are querying multiple times over multiple indexes, we use another 1,868. By the way, we are using GPT 3.5 Turbo. So we will learn how to use chat models with Llama index as well with this implementation. As you see, we are defining the LLM predictor with GPT 3.5 Turbo. And we have used another 1855, another 1875, another 1908, and another 920. And now we are ready to print the response. And when we click, we get the answer that the differences between Intel, Samsung, and Apple regarding chips they produce lie in the type of chips they manufacture. Intel and AMD both produce x86 processors, while AMD also produces GPUs and APUs. Samsung produces a variety of chips, and Apple produces its own custom ARM-based ARM -based processors. So we get a really detailed answer. So this is really useful when your use case is really mission critical and you really want the most accurate information possible. And then after that, we can actually get the sources in a formatted way. As you can see, we have actually used a lot of sources right here and all the docs that we have used with their index IDs. So this is a really comprehensive similarity search over multiple indexes all at the same time. In comparison, we can use a regular GPT vector store index in which we are actually indexing all of these companies all of this data that we have into a single index and then we query using a traditional method over the entire single index all of the companies being merged into one let's see how this will work i will run this this will actually this should store the indexes under storage under companies and we are getting the this is in the debug mode the login so we get a lot of information so this is useful if you want to really truly debug it. So we did use a total of 100,000 tokens. These are embedding tokens. And now we can query 
As you can see under storage, we have created a new directory called companies, and this is a single vector store with all of the company's documents in a single DB. Now let's ask the same question right here to this vector database. In this case, we only use a total of 1884 tokens, and now we can print the response. Let's go ahead and do that. And here's our answer. Intel creates x86, AMD creates APUs and GPUs. So we get more or less a similar response, but less detail in its composition. Let's try another query to our composable graph, explain briefly what each company does. And we'll compare it to the single vector index. I do want to mention this type of composable graph do make a lot of calls and do use a lot of tokens. GP, using GPT 3.5 alleviates the cost concern a little bit, but still we are making a lot of calls. Just keep that in mind. But like I said, in my testing, this produces usually more detailed and better results, especially when you ask a question that regards multiple indexes or all of them at the same time. Let's see what this produces. I also want to add that this process is much slower because we are making so many calls. As you see, we have already made almost close to seven or eight calls and still making further. So it's not only using more tokens and, and costly, but also takes more time. But like I said, if you absolutely have to have the best possible information, this just might be the way to go. And we'll talk more about why this is when we're reviewing the code here in a moment. We are making more calls in this case because we did ask a question which involves every company in our list, a total of four, five, six, seven, eight companies. Here is our answer. We actually got a really detailed answer, including AMD, Global Foundries, Apple, Google, Intel. It also includes Dell and Lenovo. We yeah, have Microsoft, Nvidia, HP, because probably these are mentioned in the in one way or another in all these Wikipedia articles, but we got all of ours with detailed explanations of what they do. These are all the sources that which we have used. We have used quite a lot of sources, as you can see. Now let's just test the exact same question with the regular single index. Okay, now we can ask the query and we can see the token usage, eight, to eight tokens for the query. These are embedding tokens. And then we have used a total of 1720 large language model tokens. And now we can print the response. As you see, we have an answer for Microsoft Corporation and essentially only Microsoft Corporation. So this is the difference between uh, a composable graph and a regular index because all the relevant chunks apparently must have come from the Microsoft corporations. There is no mention of uh, the other companies. So this is a great example of why composable graphs can be superior to single indexes. You can download the composable graph code plus the compare code for using the regular index from my as a patron from Patreon. Link will be in the description. Also, I have built the Ecohive AI Academy. You can visit it at ecohive.live where you can search all my videos that I have created, over 130 free AI coding videos. Check this out too, if you like, echohive.live. Now let's review the code. We are importing a lot of stuff from Llama Index. We are importing GPT-3 Index and GPT Keyword Table Index as well, but we're not going to be using them. I'll be making a more detailed video on how we can use those as well. We are importing the composable graph. And from LangChain, we are importing the chat OpenAI. Requirements for this is OpenAI, Llama Index, and for using chat models, LangChain. Requirements will be available at Patreon as well. Link will be in the description. We are importing logging, so we can do the logging with the info or debug modes and the requests, so we can make Wikipedia requests. Then we are setting our OpenAI API key, and we are defining the titles, article titles for Wikipedia pages. These can be anything. As you can see, I've included some other examples. Just remember that when you we do need summaries for these indexes, which we dynamically create right here. So this document is an article about technology company and the name dynamically is inserted. So when you if you do change the genre of your documents, then make sure to change that line as well. We're going to talk about it when we get there. So then we go over the title, we create a for loop and we go over all the titles. Then we create the data folder if it doesn't exist. Then if the files don't exist, then we make a call to Wikipedia's API with the title, then we get the page, and then we get the text, and then we save it with the name of the title to a file so that we can populate our data folder. Then we load with the simple directory reader from data, all the docs that we have, all of these text files. 
We are using Wikipedia, but you can use any type of file here. You can use any type of loader by using llama indexes, different loader types. This is just most convenient to pull the data from Wikipedia, but like I said, these can be any file types. You just have to modify the code to work with it. We are setting the LLM predictor. We are setting a variable called LLM predictor chat GPT using LLM predictor from Langchain to chat OpenAI. You can define its characteristics here. You can also use GPT-4 if you like. And we are defining a service context, which Llama index requires. We are defining the LLM predictor and the chunk size limit here. You can change these options, of course. Let me try to load the indexes from the disk. And if they don't exist, such as in the storage folder, then we try this, we try to load, and if we don't find the folder and the names of the files, then we go into the accept block and we create them. We enumerate over the wiki titles, both with the number and the name. Then we have to create a temp doc because GPT vector store index from documents do require a list. So we do have to get the doc documents, the, for example, in this case, the first document and the second document, so on, and insert it into this empty list. And then we define a storage context. This is just what is required from Llama index as a default. And then we create a current index with that temp document, which we have created. So this is what creates the index. We are making the embeddings, OpenAI embeddings call right here. Here you can use three index and simple keyword table index as well, but we're going to talk about those more in detail in a future video. And then you reset the index. We create an index set so we can have all these indexes for future use in a dictionary and we set that to the current index with the name and then we persist that using storage context persist under the storage under the folder with the name of the file then here we create the index summaries we do need to create that so that this gives the large language model some idea of what these documents are about each these are going to be created for each index as you see we are doing a for loop inline list comprehension style we do create a list of index summaries with F string. This document is an article about technology company, whatever the company's name is, for example, AMD, Apple, Google, and it gives details about the company. And we, for each name in the wiki titles, then we just print it for information purposes. Then we create a composable graph over these. Okay, the composable graph is itself going to be a GPT list index. As you can see, we are defining it here in the root, and we give it all the index summary all the indexes we are using the index set we are doing a list comprehension for loop to get all the names and then actually assign it here as a list form using the index set that we have defined and index summaries are index summaries which we have created over here service context is the service context and storage context is from default service context we have defined up here with the llm predictor which we're going to use GPT 3.54. Then we persist the graph, composable graph, into the root directory. And then we define custom query engines. We do have to define each engine. Normally, when we create a single index, we just define a single query engine. If I go to compare.py, you can see it happening right here. Query engine is the index we have created as query engine. But since we here we have eight different indexes, we do have to loop over them. And for we do have to loop over them like this and create all of them in a dictionary object. And we do use a child branch factor of two. You can increase this if you want more detailed responses. Then our query engine is graph as the query engine. Custom query engines parameter is set to custom query engines, which we have defined here. And then we enter a while through loop so that we can query. And here we enter the user query. We can break out of it with exit. We get a response from the query engine with the query. Then we print the response plus the response and plus the formatted resources, sources. The second compare.py is just a basic example of creating, it's just loading some files from a data folder. Okay. And then creating a GPT vector index from them here in the, it's a single index. And we do a regular similarity search and query with the query. And then we get a response like that. This one actually uses OpenAI's text type into 003, but the composable graph file actually uses chat model GPT 3.5 Turbo. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll find this video useful. I'm really enjoying learning more about Llama Index. Uh, and in my Patreon, if you do choose to become a patron, you can find code files for over 
uh, almost 70 other projects, including the code files. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. I just want to mention a, a Colive AI Academy. You can visit it at ecolive.live, from which you can search all my YouTube videos, 130 plus free AI coding videos. You can search and find exactly what you need if you're searching for GPT-4 or GPT-3.5. It's an instant search and you can actually find the right content, read the descriptions along with the code download links to Patreon. Feel free to use it. It's echohive.live.